After returning from work, Thomas felt frustrated and depressed, as he usually did. As a habit, he drowned his feelings with schnapps. Like any other Saturday, the 34-year-old husband and father bought groceries for his wife and three children for the week, so Renata wouldn't have to carry around shopping bags. Taking care of his family meant a lot to him, perhaps even everything. The five years he spent with Renata, the five years he hadn't killed, were the happiest for Thomas. However, on that particular Saturday, things were different. Not like before. The laundry scattered around the apartment angered him. He despised clutter. Thus, on February 25, 1995, a volcano of anger erupted within the loving family man. It wasn't just about the laundry. It was also directed at Renati's father, Eckhart Truthy. This stemmed from sharing a car with him and his interference in the upbringing of the children. Around six in the evening, Thomas walked to his father-in-law's place, who lived in the same neighborhood in the Berlin-Hellersdorf district. What followed, Rung explained simply, he was drunk. He began by buying a beer from Truthy's refrigerator. After taking a sip, he approached Eckhart and suddenly grabbed his throat with his right hand. He then placed the lifeless body in the bathtub and turned on the faucets. Following his previous pattern of murdering women, Eckhart Truthy became the first male victim on Rung's list of deaths. This murder bore a striking resemblance to a case from five years prior when he had drowned his victim in a bathtub. But this time, it was more cynical. He had forced the elderly woman he had raped to fill the tub herself. Afterward, Thomas was repulsed by the blood on the floor and, in accordance with his commitment to cleanliness and order, used the victim's underwear to wipe it up. He always made an effort to leave the crime scene, if it was indoors, meticulously clean. After obtaining 1,800 marks from the apartment of his strangled father-in-law, Thomas left. Even though he had work on Sunday, he disregarded this fact and, hailing a taxi, said, I need a woman. The driver radioed his colleagues and took him to Stuttgarten Platz, where brothels operated around the clock. Following the murder of the life lover, Thomas was drawn to socializing. He engaged four women, first two Thai brides, then a German, and on Litzenberger Strasse, a Russian, with a condom. It wasn't until around noon that an intoxicated rung managed to show up for work. His boss, Thomas Harder, sent the inebriated man away. The foreman and his colleagues were surprised. Rung had never touched a bottle of beer while working before. Rung called Harder twice. The first time, he asked for time off due to the death of his mother-in-law. The second time, he requested a vacation because his father-in-law had been murdered. The chief's comment was chilling. This guy would probably wipe out his whole family just to get out of work. Meanwhile, Rung's lifelong friend Renata had fled from home with her children. By the time the police classified her father's death as an accident, she probably already had an inkling of what had occurred. Thomas couldn't bear the emptiness of the apartment on his own. On Tuesday, he went to nightclubs and beer halls until morning with an acquaintance. Later, he felt a strong urge to talk to someone else. He returned to Hellersdorf, this time to Renate's best friend, Gabriela Prope, who often looked after their children. Gabriela stood at the doorstep, wearing a light robe. That turned me on, Thomas would later tell investigators. Rung greeted her with a brief, Hi! And still in the hallway, removed his pants and underwear. Little Gabby didn't resist. She complied with everything he demanded. After satisfying his desires, the early visitor began to strangle her. When Gabriella was gasping for breath, he set fire to the bedroom. At noon, Rung drove to the clinic for the criminally insane. He had spent time there previously for an attempted drug rape and treatment for alcoholism. Rung knew that drugs were always available in the locked ward. He purchased some hashish from an old friend at the clinic, smoked it on the premises, and passed out. The police woke him up. Thomas didn't immediately confess to his crimes. However, when he began talking, he revealed far more than the criminal police had expected. He admitted to not only the murders of Eckhard Trout and Gabriella Prope, but also to five other similar crimes. Rung entered the apartment of 77-year-old Melania Sharnoff, his landlady, under the pretext of settling a housing debt. The subsequent actions mirrored those that followed in his other crimes, questioning about hidden money, punches, kicks, and a chokehold. He brought Melania into the bedroom, stripped her, and then strangled her. Rape never occurred. As for the money, he was too anxious at the time, and in his haste, 
he only managed to find a few old five mark coins. The police seemed to be on the right track. They questioned him, but Thomas gave evasive and misleading answers, managing to avoid suspicion. The inept detectives turned their focus on 20-year-old Michael Maher, who resided in the same building where the crime took place. Maher was interrogated for nearly 20 consecutive hours. Exhausted and intimidated, he began providing contradictory statements and eventually agreed to anything he was told and signed everything put in front of him. Maher hoped for a lawyer, but unfortunately, the court-appointed defense attorney was of little help. An innocent man ended up serving eight years in prison. Exactly a month after being released by the criminal police due to lack of evidence linking him to the crime, Rung committed his most gruesome murder. It occurred on a playground near his apartment. The victim was a 22-year-old student named Suzanne Matz. Rung recalled, This time I was as brutal as ever. The girl was very clean. But she screamed and said she was a lesbian. I didn't care though. She was of frail build. Thomas beat the young woman until her mouth bled, stomped on her, and even jumped on her head, then dragged her to the playground and buried her head in the sand. Susanna choked to death. Yet this time, everything worked in his favor. The 27-year-old neighbor, who had drawn attention due to his peculiar behavior, was arrested. He repeatedly mentioned the word love, creepo, criminal police, and the lawyer attributed the motive to a love impulse. Only eight months later, the young man was released from the asylum by a court order. Thomas continued to kill as the homicidal maniac that he was. In early December, he offered to accompany 87-year-old Frida Kramer to her home, then led her to a scrap metal collection point, where he later discovered her lifeless, naked body. Creepo classified the murder as an accident. During the same month on Christmas Eve, Rung raped a 62-year-old cleaning lady named Josephine Grozer in New Kelm. A woman with a basket was walking along the canal. She obeyed me as she was alone. I put her on the ground. Josephine did not resist at all, but only said that, You are, say, so heavy. Having had enough, he strangled her and drowned her in the canal. Within three months, Rung had taken the lives of four women. The string of murders only came to a halt when Thomas was sentenced to four years in prison for other, non-fatal cases of violence and theft. When asked whether he ever thought about the suffering he caused his victims, Rung responded that he had too many problems of his own to think about others. He felt no sympathy for his victims, except perhaps a little bit for little Gabby.